we actually talked uh, before with Marie and Giri about about this uh, meetup uh, you have here and about what the content uh, content should be and I felt like basically let's let's make it interactive let's make it something something fun and maybe I should add a quiz in that and as we as we talked about uh, what the event should be we re we realized well maybe the whole thing could be a quiz so, so this is it this is the this is the uh, the product of our brainstorming and uh, what we can do and me being from Slido, I decided like, yeah, maybe I should use Slido and uh, quizzes feature to to test it out with testers and to have some fun along the way. So if you haven't already, make sure you join with your phone and uh, or go to slido.com and enter the code CY-quiz and you should be in. And if you are in, then right now when i click on on my next slide you should be able to see uh, a poll pop up so uh, i have a question for you right at the beginning uh, what's the word that comes to your mind when you hear cypress uh, and we can see already people typing in uh, i think you can you can also Type in more, uh, more uh, information, more words, or more answers. So we got reliable, awesome, Cypri. I don't really know what that means. And someone says hill, nice. <laughs> and I can see that some people are saying fast, cool, fancy, reliable. The king of testing, oh, nice. Uh, faster execution, uh, the country. Uh, yeah, the country Cypro, Cyprus, Cypress. I don't know how to pronounce that in English. We call it Cyprus <laughs> with uh, with Slovak pronunciation. Uh, kiss. <laughs> I heard the uh, Cyprus also in the other uh, presentation. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. All in testing. All right. Uh, seems we have like twenty two answers in. There are around 28 people inside inside this event. Um, so if you feel like adding some other other answer, feel free to do so. Uh, yeah, useful, no weights. All of our, all these answers I think are great. Uh, I'll make a screenshot of this. I'll send it to Gleb. <laughs> He'll be happy. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, he will be like jumping with joy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, easy to learn. That one I can vouch for. Yeah, I think Cypress is easy to learn. Uh, me, myself, I, I mean, being in a tech world uh, in around, I think, five years uh, and coming into to the tech industry with uh, no uh, knowledge of no tools, uh, then I can really vouch for Cypress being easy to learn. Like I had like little to no JavaScript knowledge, some HTML, some CSS, something like that. And then I got my first invite to the to the beta uh, testing of Cypress, uh, and I installed it. And uh, yeah, I've been using this uh, using the tool ever since. And I think it is easy to to learn. And if there's anyone new out there who's just learning uh, web technologies, uh, learning about JavaScript, learning about Cypress, uh, I think Cypress is a great tool to go along with your uh, JavaScript journey. Uh, for now, actually, it has been a great tool for my TypeScript journey as I've been learning TypeScript uh, for a couple of, well, it's been a couple of weeks, but I mean, I'm really diving into it uh, these days and it's it's really fun. Uh, all right, so let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, as I said, I ha I am five years uh, in testing, so I've been testing for five years now in Slido. That is my first career. I've been very very blessed to to have landed in such a great company, uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a roll a lot of fun. They have enabled me to grow, and yeah, like. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. That that is the, the landing here was a life changing experience. Uh, we are hiring, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't actually going to say that, but if you feel like uh, that's uh, a good shout, Philip. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't that prepared, but I, as I was saying, uh, how, how awesome is Slido, I, I realized, yeah, maybe I should block <laughs> uh, the hiring thing in. Uh, yeah, uh, if you want to, uh, if, if this feels like something for you, go check it out. So yeah, uh, before that, uh, I studied psychology. I have a psychology background and uh, i actually did uh, counseling for for a couple of uh, years after after i i started with uh, after i graduated from psychology and yeah but then i switched careers and i've been enjoying it very much uh yeah so now i do i'm a qa lead of our team and i do test automation and i am a cypress ambassador um in um uh, yeah, every week I write a blog on my blog, which is my name, philipritz.com. Uh, if you're interested in Cypress tips, uh, then make sure you check it out and make sure you sign up for the newsletter. You'll get notified every time I, I put out uh, something. Um, besides that, I do workshops, presentations, courses, consultations, uh, and all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, all related to Cyprus, uh, usually. And uh, yeah, I'm a father of three children and uh, these three little motivations are what drives me every day. Uh, so yeah, that's that's shortly about me. So I'll skip over this boring part now uh, or, or I will not spend uh, any more time on that. But if you feel uh, like you want to ask something, the Q and A part is is open, and I will get to those questions in the end. Um, all right. So I think there's not much else, but to start the quiz. But before we do that, I think we got delay. Uh, I don't think it's that dramatic since we are on a Zoom meeting. I think it would be more dramatic if we were on a on a Zoom um, webinar. So I think uh, we should be okay. But the person uh, or the people with, that are the fastest and have the most correct answers will actually win some Cyprus swag. And I, I, I was talking to people from Cyprus and they, we, they were so kind that they will provide those the first five places uh, some Cyprus swag. So make sure you are fast. Uh, be sure to check your phone. That's that's when the question starts. So, uh, so yeah, be ready. Uh, we will have some question. Uh, we will have some images. You will see it on my presentation on a big screen. Uh, but uh, also, if you tap on the on the picture on your phone, whether you you are using phone or you are using uh, a computer, if you click or tap on the picture, you will make it bigger. So you should be able to see everything that's there. But I think for now, like this screen should be should be good enough for you. Uh, if you win, uh, don't forget to fill your e email in the profile. You can find the profile icon in the top right corner. And if you if you fill your email, then I will contact you and uh, and uh, make sure that the cyber swag will get to you. Uh, so, and the most important thing, let's have some fun with it. All right. Uh, if you don't win, uh, don't worry. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get your hands on the Cypress swag some other way. So this is mostly about, about having fun. So I still see some people joining. So make sure that you, that you join, uh, join us, join with your phone, go to slido.com and, and enter CY quiz or scan the QR code, that's actually much faster. So if you just, if you have an iPhone, you can just open your, your photo, um, your camera and just point it and you should be able to, to join. If you have an Android, I don't know what will you do, but you'll probably, um, uh, you'll probably get very fast by QR code too. Uh, all right, so it seems like if I remember correctly that the next slide is actually get ready. So the quiz is about to begin. So make sure that 
that you are ready. Uh, so I think there's nothing left to say but but to start and go over uh, to the first question. So it is active. You can now uh, put in your name and click on the green join button. I see that people are fast, that people are joining. Everyone wants to win. That's great. <laughs> okay, make sure you are in. We got 21 people. Uh, and I see 36 participants on Zoom. So we'll I'll activate the first questions question as uh, soon as I see. I think, yeah, I, I don't think that everyone will join. Well, me, I will not join. So I think we can wait for 30 people or not. We'll see. We have 25 people joined in. I don't want to leave out anyone in case you are you're struggling, you're trying to find the, the code or slido.com doesn't work for you now. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, make sure that uh, that you tell me actually that's that would be that would be bad. Uh, all right. 26 people. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, well, I guess let's start. So I will activate the first question. So Consider this code, uh, the following code that you can see on the screenshot. What will running this test in Cypress do? So you can see we have a single it block just to will do a test. But there's also this thing, uh, browser Chrome and the function. And there are just three dots like in the in the comment that you can see which represents your test. But what will running this code do? So the options are, it will run this test only on Chrome, or it will run this test only when the test run, uh, test is running on Chrome. Um, uh, sorry, run. It will run this test only when the test is running on Chrome, uh, or it will throw an error. So these are the these are the three options. Uh, okay. And we got those votes in. And the correct answer is it will run this test only on, on Chrome. So 48% uh, of you got it right. Uh, so configuring your tests. Uh, this is uh, actually a topic I have written about, about how you can, how you can skip and, uh, and uh, write your uh, test or run your test only on diff, um, only on certain conditions. So for example, if you have a Cypress JSON file, you can choose to ignore test files. And if you use a naming convention, uh, like uh, put all your smoke tests, name all your smoke tests by dot smoke TS, uh, you can actually ignore uh, all of those tests by defining it in cypress.json. Or you can choose to not ignore those tests and instead of ignore test files, you just write test files. So this is a configuration you, you can choose if you want to make sure that not all the tests are run, but, uh, but only some of them. Similarly, uh, you can skip your tests using CLI. So this, this piece of code will run your tests, uh, uh, will only run those tests that have the dot smoke dot ts in them so all the type typescript files uh, that are in this folder and the asterisk is actually it actually stands for uh, all the files that um, that uh, well the, all the different names so it actually matches the thing um, and the third one is uh, that you can skip uh, your test using a configuration so you can actually I think uh, it was version Cypress 5. That for no, I don't remember. Sorry, <laughs> I don't remember. But you can actually do a configuration only per test. So whether that is uh, Chrome or whether that is adding the browser, which will uh, so the test will only run uh, while uh, running in a certain browser. Or you can change your base URL, you can change your viewport, or or uh, all kinds of different stuff. Uh, but 
these are the ways that you where you can filter or skip your tests and if you are interested in reading more on these topics you can find them on my blog uh, so philipreads.com slash skip tests that's a short link uh, to my blog on skip tests conditionally with cypress so make sure you give it a read all right so let's get ready to another question uh, all right uh, so we are getting ready anyone else is joining probably not so let's activate the next question and we again have a piece of code and we have a filter function so what will this filter function do considering this code so we are getting our li element our list element and then we are using a function filter and passing an argument which is dot primary so uh, the options are it will select all li elements without the test without the class primary or the option of throwing a syntax error or it will select all li elements with the class primary or the fourth option it will filter all li elements that have a parent element of the class primary so we'll see who has actually used this function and uh, and we'll see so we get five four three two one seconds till the end and it seems like uh, there's quite a big this was probably an easy question because yeah we got all select all li elements that uh, have the class primary so yeah you can get your element and you can uh, as you know uh, when you use the get uh, function if it matches multiple elements it will give you an array of of those elements so there are a couple of functions that you can actually use for for uh doing some work with those elements one of them being the filter function so yeah it will se uh, select Oh, I have a, I have a, I have a typo here. I actually wanted to, wanted to add another example of this. So this will select elements with the class primary uh, dot primary, but there, there's also the the exact opposite of this function, which is called not. Uh, so if you would type instead of filter, you would type not. It will, it, it would select all the elements that do not have the class primary. So these are different ways that you can uh, select your elements. You can even select a parent element. So example, you have li element and you want to jump up or you want to find se select uh, find elements uh, selecting the way up, uh, then you can use the parent, which is kind of neat because uh, when you're going down the DOM, uh, looking with the get function, you only go way down so if you have different kinds of uh, uh, selectors and you don't really uh, have like a good selector and you need to you, you cannot really change change the uh, change the uh, the thing then uh, then it would uh, uh, then you need to go down but with the parent you can actually go up all right so a uh, blog about selectors you can check it out it's uh, it's called cypress basics and selecting elements all right so let's uh get ready for the for the another question so make sure you are joined in and and let's activate another question all right so try to take a look at the placeholder text so in the screenshot we got a placeholder text and it's inside an expect function uh, and uh, we have a assertion there that it should contain buy milk but uh, we have expect to do and then the placeholder text so what will it do so the options are it will do nothing it will just ignore uh, ignore this placeholder text or it will throw a syntax error because I don't know expect doesn't uh, doesn't give you two options you can only pass one uh, 
or it will open a portal to another dimension. Maybe, maybe that's what will happen. Uh, or the fourth option that's over here, it will show that text as an error message. So let's see what will it do. Uh, nobody voted for the portal. I mean, mm, that's a bummer. All right, but it seems like most of the people have voted for that it will show that text as a custom error message, which is the correct answer. So congratulations to all of you that have the have the correct answer. And yeah, uh, so as I said, I blog every week and sometimes I put out these tips and tricks. Uh, this one being one of them. So if you want to have a custom uh, error message, you, uh, you can actually pass the second argument and that argument uh, will be the text of your error message if you if yeah, that assertion would fail. So you can actually make your uh, error messages more readable. And that way, that, that means they're uh, faster to debug, probably. Uh, also, you can customize your log command. Uh, this is actually a tip I got from, uh, from a person that has commented uh, on, my, on my blog. Uh, and uh, yeah, he gave me this this good advice about how you can change the formatting of your of your log command. So you got your bold text, italic, or you can even uh, put a link inside the the log command. So that's that's pretty neat. Uh, also, another tip from the blog is that you can uh, wait on multiple elements and then make assertions on on them. Basically, the then function will then pass on the array of uh, of elements, and you can make a, an assertion about either either one or both of uh, both of those uh, both of those requests that you've been uh, intercepting. Uh, more about this topic you can find on uh, again on my blog and slash tricks. So these are the lesser known Cypress IO tricks. Make sure you check them out. All right, get ready for the next question. Uh, so let's start. Okay, so this is a trick question. Which command will help you achieve a hover in Cypress? And that is trigger mouse over, or that would be the function of invoke show, or will that be real hover or dot hover? or none of these, it's impossible to you to hover using Cypress. So if you're using Cypress, forget hover altogether. It's not going to happen. Uh, so, and I have to say that it, it is a trick question and uh, hopefully uh, it will be entertaining. <laughs> so make sure, make sure that, uh, that you figure this out. And I can see that votes are in and I'm kind of influencing the, the crowds because votes are changing. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how many of you uh, will know that. All right. So nobody voted for invoke show. And most of you think that is trigger mouse over. And uh, the correct answer is, and I will get uh, in the, into it in a moment why that is the correct answer, is the real hover. So the real hover is not uh, a command that is right in Cypress, but it's, it is actually a command that you will get using a plugin for Cypress. So you can use uh, uh, hover in Cypress, but you actually have to use plugin. Um, there is no hover command. <clears throat> in Cypress, so there's uh, nothing for that as far as I know. Uh, but, uh, and the trigger will actually do a pretty good job of, of simulating uh, a hover, but uh, most of the time that applies only on the elements that are, um, that have some kind of event listener uh, on them. If you have like this pure CSS hover, then it's not actually possible for you to, to, to use trigger mouse over because that will not do anything. Um, and let me, no, not sure why I'm not moving forward, but yeah. So yeah, there are different ways of how you can do, uh, kind of simulate hover. The invoke show, show would be one of them. 
it's not it's not really the really the optimal part because what you will do is that basically take an element that is not visible and make it visible so it's not really you doing the hover but uh, invoking a function on an element but yeah you can you can click that you you can you don't have to do the force click uh, inside your tests but you can invoke it and then click on it um, and make sure that is that the element is actually visible then the other other thing you can do is yeah do the mouse uh, mouse over and another typo here <laughs> uh, but you can do real hover and that is with the plugin that came out uh, i don't know i think it was uh, sometime about last year and it is really really a good one I, i've been really enjoying working with it so it's Cypress real events. And um, as you may have uh, may, may know that Cy Cypress actually when you're when it is interacting with your page is firing JavaScript uh, uh, functions to interact with your page. So the click is triggered by JavaScript. The type typing is it's all triggered by JavaScript. But with this Cypress real events, you can actually use uh, Chrome DevTools protocol to to uh, fire real events uh, or into your application. So the real click, real type, there's also, uh, I think there's uh, support for tab uh, button. So if you want to test accessibility, this, this one might help. Uh, and there's also a swipe function. Uh, I think that came out just a couple of weeks ago or days ago. So make sure you check this out. It's a, it's a really, really cool one. Um, Again, I write uh, about this in my blog and I write about this in, in more detail. So hopefully I didn't, uh, you didn't get mad for the three question and uh, let's get to, let's get to another one. All right, so get ready, it's coming up. Uh, and we got 30 people already now, so yeah. All right, so we have an element. Now, right now we have an HTML element and it has a style of display none, so it's not visible. And now the question is, which of these assertion is not going to pass? So let's say we select this element, we got our data CY, we, we have selected it, and now we write an assertion that has a shoot. And which of these will actually not pass? So the first option is should not be visible. The second one is should not exist. The third one should uh, have length and the fourth is should be disabled. So make sure you select the one that is not going to pass. Wait, looking at this, I'm actually not, not sure I didn't make a mistake over here. Oh my. Uh, I think I'm wrong about about the fourth one because the yeah the is not going to pass yeah I'm sorry I have confused you uh, the fourth one actually is uh, is also not going to pass because oh yeah uh, no I I confused myself sorry it's all good <laughs> so the should not be visible is actually the one that what the hell I, I completely confused myself like this I, I'm using um double <laughs> double negation uh yeah double double something uh let me let me look into that I'm sorry I'm so sorry uh so let's say we have selected this element which of this assertion is not going to pass not be visible uh not exists so the should not exist is oh my god did i screw this up already uh, uh, huh, huh, huh. yeah so sorry for that i kind of uh let's let's just skip over this um i'm sorry i'm going to i'm going to what am i going to do like we are we are we are competing for for Cypress merch and <laughs> and I think I screwed up the question uh, in the yeah 
in my bio there was this thing about me that I am sleep deprived and there you have it folks I I probably screwed up the question if I if I'm reading that correctly like I'm now so confused that I don't know what what but uh, for some reason what I wanted to <laughs> what I wanted to uh, have as the correct answer is should not be visible and I think I I I should have not inserted the thing which of this assertion is not going to pass so the so the should not exist is going to pass no if that is not going to pass should have length is uh going to pass because it is it is it has a display none but it is actually inside the dom should be disabled is is going to is not going to pass because it's not disabled and should not be visible is going to pass so I completely screwed this up. I'm so, so sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to skip over that and make sure that when I look into the into the result, I take this into account. Uh, all right, well, way to go, Philip. Uh, all right, so, so the thing is, uh, the, the thing I wanted to talk about uh, uh, on this question, and again, I'm sorry for screwing the, this up, was the topic of visibility in Cypress. Uh, there's actually a slight difference between asserting that the element is not visible and asserting that the element does not exist. Uh, element not being visible uh, actually means that it can, it can still be uh, inside the DOM, uh, but, uh, but it will not be visible. Uh, the other thing about visibility is that if you, for for example, have the have a div uh, in your on your app or, or on your web page, and you have this option like overflow scroll, then some of your elements might uh, not be visible, and that is that is because they are actually below the fold of the page or below the the fold of the of the element. If this would not be an option then even though you open your page and you cannot see the elements being uh, visible, uh, at, at that point, like the, the assertion on should be visible uh, would actually pass. Uh, although you cannot physically see those elements, they are in a way visible, like potentially they are visible. While with this option, with the overflow scroll, the elements would not be visible. Uh, all right. so. Uh, again, a blog on Cypress basics, check if the element exists and that is the blog on visibility. So, all right. Uh, so get ready. Next question is coming up. Hopefully I'll uh, do better this time. Uh, all right. So the next question is what will typing this command into terminal do? So we got cypress underscore version equals free prod npx cypress open. So if you type this into your terminal, it will do one of these things. It will launch an unreleased version of Cypress. So some kind of pre-production build. Uh, it will do nothing and Cypress will just launch normally. Uh, or it will throw an error and Cypress will not launch because this would be something that's not enabled or it will set an environment variable into Cypress. So let's see which of these options sounds like the most viable. And we get eight seconds, six to go. So make sure you pick one and hit send. And there we have it. All right, so uh, the correct answer is set environment variable into Cypress. So this is what, what it will do. Uh, the Cypress underscore prefix, if you use that in your terminal, it will actually use this, mm, this uh, variable as an environment variable. So the Cypress underscore version, I'm not sure if how uh, well you can see it, but here I have my settings window 
and there's the ENV uh, uh, ENV object and inside that I have the version of uh, which has a string of preprod so the option that so if you vote it for uh, it will add a environment variable that is the correct one it's going to do exactly that and all of the variables that have cypress underscore uh, are actually going to be used like this so you can use that to configuration and uh, uh, I think there's uh, yeah I think it should be in caps it should be in caps uh, I'm pretty sure it actually takes also the the lower case okay at least the documentation talks about it in caps so we yeah. assume that yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, usually when you're yeah the, the convention on passing environment uh, variables is is usually that they're written uh, in all caps uh i am pretty sure but i mean don't take my word for it probably uh uh but i, I think i have tested this be, before i put into question and it has taken also the 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 lower uh lower lower case uh, letters so uh, config plugin, if you want to create your own configuration plugin, uh, there's, a, there's an article about that. So let's get ready for the next question. And it is coming up. So get ready. And yeah, so we got a bigger piece of code here. A uh, couple of hooks before, before hook where we set a cookie that is top secret and before each uh, where we have our Cypress API, where we preserve once the cookie that has the name of authentication. And we get two tests, a first test and a second test. So in which test will our cookie will um, be available? So the options are, it will not be available in any of these tests. Uh, the second, it will be uh, only in the first test, as we know Cypress deletes uh, cookies and resets state uh, in between tests, or it will be available only in second tests, or actually using this code, it will be available in both tests. So let's see. And we are in, we have some people voting for the second option, non none of the people are voting for the first and the third. So in both tests is actually the correct answer and most of you got it right and congratulations. All right, uh, so where are we now in the quiz? I think we have gone through uh, six questions now. So let's, let's get going, let's go further. So yeah, actually before that, uh, something about, about cookies, so as you know, a Cypress clears out the state of browser in between tests, but there's an API you can use either to debug your cookies, which I don't think I have ever actually used, but uh, you can also preserve cookies or, or set up defaults. Uh, and inside the defaults, you can set which of the cookies you can actually uh, uh, put into allowed list, so they will not get uh, deleted in between tests uh and uh, yeah so that's pretty useful and if you want to if you want to keep those cookies only inside the spec uh, in inside a single spec then actually the preserve once api is quite useful you put that in your before each uh block and you make it available for the whole test uh so yeah i've written about that also and it's uh, again a blog about cypress basics so where did my cookies disappear? It's probably the question when you first start interacting with Cypress and suddenly you're logged out, you're not sure why. Uh, so yeah, I write about this, but also about some, some other stuff uh, here at, uh, at this article. So let's get ready to another questions. And we got three more questions to go. So make sure you are fast and let's get to it. So get ready. And there we have it. So now a question about Cypress dashboard. So this is a service you can use uh, with uh, either only a paid subscription or you can use it for free for 50 record recordings monthly. 
uh, you can use it for 500 recordings monthly or you can use it for for free it's unlimited recordings it's all open source uh, so we're talking about cypress dashboard and how you can use it so we can see the votes coming in and we still got 15 seconds so make sure you cast your votes we got 20 people voted uh, and let's see so we got our results in and most of you got it well not actually most of you but <laughs> the most people 42% uh, have uh, uh, voted for the correct option so uh, I think in the past is what it was like uh, that that you could only use Cypress dashboard with uh, paid uh, subscription but now uh, you can actually try it out for free and it's not totally free uh, and unlimited uh, for everyone but actually uh, yeah, so this is the Cypress dashboard pricing and the free free tier actually goes with 500 record things monthly. So you can you can check it out. Uh, what's really nice is that if you have an open source project, so you have your own project that you want to test with Cypress, you have it on GitHub, it has an MIT license or something like that. You can actually ask for, for an open source plan. And in that case, you can actually use uh, unlimited test recordings uh, inside the Cypress dashboard. Um, I have actually been using Cypress dashboard. I think it's pretty cool. And especially I like this analytics feature where you can see, uh, where you can see the results of, uh, of different runs. You can see your run duration, slowest, slowest tests, most flaky tests and stuff like that. I think it's a really, really good insight. Um, yeah. So I recommend, if you want to check it out, how that works, uh, if you look at the screenshot, I actually have a Cypress real world app opened here. So the dashboard for that app is actually available for you to uh, look into. So make sure you check that out. Uh, so on the page cypress.io OSS plan, you can find the open source uh, uh, plan for the dashboard. So make sure you check it out. All right, so let's get to the question and we have been mentioning uh, Cypress uh, Air uh, real world app so let's have a question about that not sure if you have tried it but uh, the question is what framework is Cypress real world application written in so it's either in Vue, React, Angular or Svelte so four of the probably most uh, popular frameworks or javascript web development frameworks frameworks uh, so if you have used it then you probably know uh, if you haven't then uh, good luck with the guess uh, or if you're fast enough you can go and check it out you still got around 20 seconds <laughs> so try and see uh, if the app was written in Vue, react angular or svelte so 10 seconds we got 24 votes in and yeah so these are the votes nobody voted for svelte and uh, most of you think it's react and most of you are correct so yeah it's written in in react and there are lots of good examples, lots of examples of uh, good practices. So you can find it on GitHub. You can check it out, uh, clone it uh, to your computer, uh, run it and try to play with that. I think it's, uh, it's a really, really nice experience. And uh, yeah, looking at the code uh, on actually the test code, you can see some really great examples of how you can use Cypress and you can learn from that. So uh so yeah uh also there are different kind of branches uh on this real world app well usually you check out the master branch or the main branch uh oh in this case the, the main branch is actually the uh the develop 
uh, but you can act actually look into different branches and there are some interesting uh, there's some interesting stuff there so for example kevin over here has made some examples on auth0 or sso login or google login and uh, i think they are worth checking out on uh, on different solutions on how to solve different problems most of them can be found on the develop branch but some of them are hidden in there so uh, so i think it's it might be nice for you to check check that out so yeah find it on github uh, under the cypress io organization and cypress real world app it is so get ready for our last question so let's see what is the last question and i'm going to run it now so the by default when cypress is ran headlessly which browser it uses uh, so it's either electron or chrome or firefox or edge or it's internet explorer uh, not sure if if anyone is going to pick the last option uh, so yeah electron chrome firefox edge or ie uh, if i were in the quiz i'd probably probably uh, choose the ie and yeah the, the netscape navigator would be a good one yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this question deserves no more than 10 seconds. I actually was thinking that uh, I should change the limit over here, but I wanted to make sure that if we are not in sync completely, then uh, then everyone gets a chance to vote. Uh, yeah, so someone actually gave in, uh, i.e. thank you for that. <laughs> and by default, the default option is actually Electron. So if you don't put a flag, uh, on a different browser and type in cypress run or npx cypress run then your test tests will run in electron that's the that's the default choice and let's get into the results of our tests uh, tests i mean i'm <laughs> not tests but our quiz and see who's the winner so we got five winners most of them uh have uh, so we got one person uh having eight uh eight of those correct other ones have seven so these five places make sure you fill out your email and and make sure that uh that i can contact you with uh so you can get your cypress swag uh and the hardest question is of course the the one that i screwed up again i'm so sorry for that I hope I didn't take your win from you. I'll I'll be that that will be that would be that would be awful. Uh, yeah, but I hope that you did have some fun. Uh, that was actually the intention of of this. So hopefully, uh, at least I achieved that. Uh, so congratulations to the winner. And uh, yeah, this was fun. So thank you so much. Uh, you can find me uh, on my webpage. I have been promoting it as hell uh, today. I'm probably, probably a little over the top. Uh, but if you want to connect, uh, you can find me on slash LinkedIn, Twitch, YouTube, GitHub, Discord, uh, and on Twitter, obviously. So we can, uh, we can connect and talk about cyprus i mean this is this is a great community to to talk about cyprus so if you feel like that uh make sure you'll connect so i didn't actually put in uh, the q a but i can yeah i can activate it uh, uh yeah so we got a couple of questions so i i'll make sure that i'll run through them very quickly hopefully you can you can see them uh, is there? A, it seems like there are some difficulties in uh, in getting into the into the profile. Uh, if you don't find any other way, um, I think you should be able. Yeah, I think you should be able to find it in the top right corner. 
but if not uh, we'll figure something out um hopefully if uh, yeah okay for for now let's get into the questions if you're still unable at the end of the q a to to get your email in then we'll figure something out so let's get to let's get to those questions so what are the limitations and how to work around with them i'm not entirely sure which uh, which uh, uh question actually which which part of uh, of uh, of the quiz is this referring to but if you're asking in general uh about what are the limitations of cypress and how to work around or work around with them i think you can find a couple of great resources on uh, on uh, how uh, on different workarounds so for example Mar marie over here uh has wrote a great blog about uh, how to work around with uh, iframes, which is something that is, of course, at the moment limited. Although, if you look at the roadmap of Cypress, they are actually going to, they are, they are actually exploring um, possibilities of how to, how to switch between different different frames. Uh, and I'll be really interested into finding out how how that will work. But it seems like. They are working on it, so we'll see. Uh, the other way, the other limitation that I can think of, uh, there is this um, uh, there's this problem with tabs, uh, with browser tabs, uh, and uh, that is that is one I actually covered in my blog, so you can you can find some solutions over there. Uh, although by design. You cannot really open a new tab and interact uh, with Cypress on the page in the second tab and then try to see something what's happening in the first tab uh, or vice versa. So that's that's a design limitation that probably wouldn't wouldn't work. The other one is hover that we have mentioned. There are a couple of workarounds that you can work with, but there's also also a plugin that you can use for for that. Those are the three that came into mind. The other quite big is obviously the the single domain uh, limitation. So that is something that that is limited at the moment. But again, if you look at the roadmap of Cypress, they are exploring, and I think there's this is actually something that's work in progress. Uh, maybe maybe Marie or Giri could uh, fact check me on this. Uh, uh, but yeah, the 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 multi domain support. Uh, seems to be coming, so we'll see. Uh, I think it's already planned for for Q one or Q two. Yeah, I don't don't want to say say too soon, but uh, it seems that that this this will be a thing in the past. So we'll see. Uh, all right. Hope I answered your question, Charles. Uh, let's get to the other one. So how to run Cypress tests in parallel in local machine? I don't think you can do that. Uh, I don't have a solution. But uh, yeah, don't don't really know how to answer answer this. I don't think it's it's uh, technically possible. Um, so yeah, no no answer for that. Sorry. Uh, the other one. Why is Selenium community trashing Cypress? Are you? Uh, not sure if uh, if uh, I haven't seen actually. Uh, like this community, I'm not so like in engaging too much in this community, but I have a Discord channel where there are over hundred of people using Cypress. I don't think we've been trashing Selenium, uh, and I don't think like uh, internet flame wars are actually a uh, way to go. Uh, whichever, these are just tools, all right. <laughs> whichever works for, works for you and does the job well, I think is the right one for you. So I don't think we need to. We need to trash Selenium or Cypress or any tool for that matter. Uh, I think the uh, the important thing for testers is to have the goal in mind, which is uh, quality and good product and uh, good uh, customer satisfaction on, or whatever that we are doing. And the the principle behind I think it's much more inter uh, important than the uh, choice of the tool. So. If you are, if there's anyone in Cypress community trashing Cypress, you should stop that. Not cool. 
<laughs> and vice versa. Uh, all right, Oracle DB integration with Cypress. Sorry, no, uh, no um, uh, experience with that. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry if I if I had an answer, I'm glad to provide it to you. But I don't. I'm not aware of some kind of Oracle DB integration with Cypress. So yeah, okay. So let's move to the other one. Uh, sometimes I see the element, but it says it's not visible in Cypress. Mm, that may be. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's a good uh, good um, opportunity to try to find out how your app actually works. I mean, I've been in these situations where I could obviously see an element, but uh, Cypress would tell me it's not visible. Sometimes it was just covered by another element uh, that had like a slightest opacity, or it would be uh, it would have uh, this. It would be in this situation where it would be partially covered, and Cypress just wouldn't let me go through that. Um, and in Slido, we actually have an element that has this has this fade out uh, element uh, at the at the top, and uh, the whole thing inside is scrollable. So whenever I use get. Uh, that, then uh, the whole thing scrolls and it actually scrolls to the part that is uh, under the fade out element. So that's that's kind of annoying. So I just use force click there because I, I mean, it's good enough solutions for me. But I mean, there can be many reasons where, where uh, Cypress tells you that the element is not visible. And Cypress works uh, with some kinds of... Uh, uh, some kinds of rules and it's good to examine those rules what they are and it's good to examine that with any tool you use because I think that uh, that knowing how something works actually enables you to understand it better so for example if element is declared not visible and you can clearly see it then then that's a good opportunity to to examine uh, how your app is actually working uh, how do I deal with SSO uh, not optimally, uh, I have to say. I actually use Puppeteer in uh, in background, so I have this. Uh, I use Cypress Task, which runs a Puppeteer script for me, which then takes the authorization and uh, passes it on to my test, and then I continue in Cypress with my test. It's uh, I'm saying it's not ideal because. Uh, uh, because I don't think like this is an effective uh, solution, and for a while now I've been trying to explore that uh, that solution from real world application uh, made by Kevin Alt. I actually have been um, in touch with him, and uh, we we discussed uh, about how that solution works. And again, this was kind of a great example of uh, trying to find out how the Google SSO works. I mean, not sure uh, how many of you can answer like how the uh, Google authentication works, like in like what happens when you click that button and what happens uh, until you come back to your application. And I feel like I don't really understand that all that well. Uh, but I been able to kind of touch on uh, touch on a couple of basics, and I certainly want to explore that more. But I think it should be and it. Is, it is quite possible that you can uh, log in programmatically uh, to to SSO. I'm pretty sure there are some constraints, like it's not not that easy. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely check out that uh, that real world application uh, branch on on Google SSO. Uh, so that would be my advice. But yeah. Uh, all right, so what's the difference between Electron and Chrome? So Electron is basically a node uh, browser and that's all I can say about that. I don't really know too much uh, about this. Um, but yeah, the difference, dif there are a couple of differences. Uh, for example, not sure if you have ever uh, tested a clipboard. So for example, you have a button that you click and it copies the thing into your clipboard. Uh, for some reason, 
well, I could actually explain that reason, but I don't really want to go too much into details. Um, but uh, in Electron, you can actually you can actually do that action. In Chrome, uh, not so much. Um, and the reason behind is simple: like uh, these um, browsers actually evaluate whether that click uh, click action is trusted, or it was made by a person, or it was made by a script. Uh, and it is obvious it was made by a script when that when that click was fired by JavaScript, which is the Cypress uh, way to to interact with the page. Uh, and in Electron, you don't really have that problem. Um, okay. Um, so the next question is whether I do have a blog post about SSO with Puppeteer. I don't. I actually copied the solution with Puppeteer from um, from the plugin that is on Cypress uh, plugins page. So there is uh, like this plugin called Social Logins, and if you look inside the code, what what it does. It, uh, it uses Puppeteer in, in the background. And uh, it, it's actually a really simple script and it works in a way that it will, uh, the, the whole uh, package works in a way that you just enter a couple of, uh, couple of uh, CSS selectors, uh, which you, uh, some of them are in the beginning of the journey, like what's the login button that you actually click on. Some of them are at are at the end of journey. So what's the element that should be visible after I successfully went through the flow? Uh, so yeah, if you examine that, I think you will get a pretty good idea on what, uh, on how to do that. Uh, yeah, but if you, if you like to see that, uh, come hang out on Discord and maybe, maybe I can uh, send some code or gist to you on how that works. Uh, all right, what are alternatives are you using for cross browser? I am using, uh, I'm just using straight up uh, Selenium web driver and I run that through browser stack. So I have a couple of simple simple scripts just uh, as a kind of a smoke test for, for different browsers and like all of the other functional stuff, I just use Cypress for that. Um, how do you deal with uh, chat testings to users communicating? All right, so that's that's an interesting topic. And I <laughs> I did actually write a blog about that on how to test a WebSocket application. And I jumped into the assumption that the chat application uses some kind of WebSocket connection, whether that is socket IO or something of that sort. Uh, now, uh, for example, well, let, let's give an example. Uh, uh, this this slider screen that you can see, uh, it's actually not too different from a chat application. You send in your question, and as you send your question, that question appears. So the principle is uh, similar to, to what happens when, when you're chatting with someone. They send a message, and that message appears on, on, your, uh, on your phone or in your messenger. Uh, so the way I test that is that I actually uh, use the API. So when I want to test this uh, uh, wall and I want to test whether uh, the question appears when it is sent, so there's no question at the beginning, then it is sent and it appears. What I do is I open open this uh, this part of my app and I send an API request and make sure that it appears. So I kind of go into uh, kind of a high level, uh, like. No, not sure if I would call it high level, but it's more uh, broad perception of of what the application does. Uh, and uh, I know that uh, different uh, applications are wired differently and they work differently in the background. For us, whenever there's a couple of uh, API points that when they are triggered, they also send a WebSocket message. So when that happens, uh, so, so knowing that this is what happens, I actually just fire the request and make sure that, uh, that the behavior is as it should be. Um, so this is the way I would deal with that. Uh, hope that answers the question. Uh, all right. How do I deal with the issue when I land on the page and the element that I'm looking is not visible? 
the refresh the page, but it still may not be uh, there and avoid wait. Oh, that is a good question. Um, I have a counter question for that. Like what makes the element appear? Because that might be, that might be a crucial part of, of this. Uh, and yeah, uh, sometimes I, I, sometimes I do have this problem uh in that case uh but what causes this problem is usually some kind of database api lag or something like that so when i open my app and i have a list of questions uh when i open it a get request to get all my questions for this event uh should appear uh, so when i'm dealing with this situation where the element that i want to have uh, have inside doesn't appear it means that uh, that the get request actually returned uh, the questions without the one I wanted to see um, so the one one way to deal with that is before I uh, open my app to make sure that the API gives me the correct response so you can either poll uh, use polling and try to uh, run that um, a request a couple of times before you open the app so first make sure that the api is behaving correctly and then open your app and the other one is just use wait i mean i have a couple of weights in my tests uh like we do want to avoid those as as much as we want sometimes frankly they are the best solution uh because i mean also the the app uh, that i'm testing sometimes it has some kind of debounce logic where you would just have a set timeout function that is set for a certain time. So in that case, why wouldn't I use a wait that is set for that same uh, same time? Uh, and the answer might be, well, then just use the clock uh, function in Cypress. And you can do that. So, I mean, there are different ways to, to deal with that. Um, yeah, so hopefully I answered that question. Um, but that's a that's a good topic. Maybe I'll I'll write a I'll write an article about that. Uh, you want to know more about Cypress tasks? Where can you learn the basics? Hmm, mm, that's a good one. Maybe in my future blog. <laughs> I mean the the documentation is pretty good resource for that. But I mean your situation might be a little different and it's hard to find a match between what, what documentation says sometimes and what's what is your practical application of that and uh and yeah sometimes you just need to start some, somewhere else uh but yeah i think like this is this is good uh, this is good topic to explore so so maybe i'll write something something about that because task is actually really really powerful and really nice tool to have because you can just during your test you can jump into node do some action there and then come back to you uh, when that function finishes you can continue with uh, in your browser with all the data or with anything that your function has returned to you so so there are like multiple of cool applications that you can that you can do uh all right <clears throat> okay so how to prevent then hell when dealing with many api requests uh you're probably not going to believe me at this point anymore but i have written a blog about this <laughs> and uh and I have a solution for that, uh, which is kind of my own solution. I don't know if that would work, but uh, what I do is that I uh, I use my API requests a lot. Like uh, I try to open my application only at the moment where I'm ready to test. Sometimes, sometimes I use uh, a, a couple of API uh, endpoints and run them uh, to kind of seed not really see the database, but kind of to get some data inside that I want to then interact with through the application. Uh, so I use UI only for the UI part and I use API for, for the setup part. And what I do 
is that I have these requests for uh, our API. I have them encapsulated inside uh, a custom command. So inside my custom command, then there's the there's a request, and then I have a then function, which actually handles the data of that request, and it will save them into uh, Cypress env. So I save that as an environment variable. So if you have ever used Postman, and you have if you used environment variables, okay. that is like kind yeah, of a simple, uh, uh, very similar uh, solution. Uh, and then uh, I use another custom command and another custom command and another custom command, and everything is kind of encapsulated into inside uh, inside uh, its own custom command. Uh, but then the data. Uh, when I need to access them, like I get an element and I want to make an assertion that it has this, I, I don't know, it has a text with the data that I have uh, generated from API, then uh, then I will just take them from Cypress env. And you can learn uh, all around that in uh, all, all about that in in the blog. Like that's kind of my approach into into uh, into solving the then hell. All right, you're using intercept to wait for the request, but my app will fail sometimes for a couple of times, and then the wait looks only for the first request and fail. Mm, that's that's kind of hard to hard to answer this question. Like it seems this is a specific problem, and uh, it's hard to give like general mm, answer. Or solution to to this particular problem, I I have seen that that between version six point zero and six point four there have been some improvements, and I I did struggle uh, with the version six point zero with intercept and waiting for for some requests. It just didn't work. So if you haven't updated, I would definitely as a first step suggest that. Um, but then if it's something like more specific then uh, yeah we can look at it together or try to uh maybe uh, look into the to the github issues if there's like a bug on on cypress with that uh all right so uh do you test everything in your app with automated tests or the key business flows uh i think uh, the more honest answer would be uh, that I that I test everything. I don't have everything tested, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I try to uh, not only look into the key business flows, like those are uh, important. So as I started writing my tests, the sending question, answering poll, creating event, those would be the first things I would, uh, I would test with Slido. Um, uh, a test with Cypress in uh, in the Slido application. So these are the key business flows that always need to work no matter what. And uh, then for the other parts, uh, yeah, I try to cover those as well. And recently I have been playing with uh, with code coverage, and that is a really interesting tool. Uh, with uh, yeah, that that is really interesting because it can. Uh, kind of guide you through your code, try try to guide you through the application and see what's covered and what's not. And um, you can achieve quite a, quite a lot with uh, with this approach, like quite good coverage because end-to-end -end tests are just great at at, uh, at covering your code. But, um, uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, I think that's, that sums it up. Uh, any other tool which have CY wait kind of functionality? Uh, not really. To be honest, I'm kind of a, a newbie into a whole world of testing. I kind of grasps, grasped the Cypress uh, head on because we have a web application that is using, using REST API. So Cypress is kind of really a great tool for testing this kind of application. I did play a little with uh, with uh, Puppeteer, with Playwright, 
and with Selenium WebDriver. I think these are really good tools to, to explore. Not sure if they have a weight uh, functionality. Uh, I think Playwright has something like that. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, and I think, yeah, that should be probably last question as we are approaching the end. And uh, whether I use Cypress for end-to-end -end tests only or maybe API regression as well, I did uh, use Cypress for API tests and I kind of combine both of them. So for example, if I'm testing my application and there is a request, like for example, sending your question, then what I do, I actually intercept uh, the, the uh, request and I look into the uh, request body and also response body because that's there's some in uh, there's some good information in there and they need to be tested um, most of the time uh, I try to test the the request because that's what what the app is responsible for that's what the app is sending so you're not going to get a good data back if you're not sending the right uh, data in so the, the request body is actually important for me to test the response uh, simple 200 codes might be sufficient enough uh, in some cases, in some cases not. But uh, yes, I do API tests. I do visual regression. Uh, we are using, we are using Percy for that. Uh, so far, the experience is kind of pay painful. Um, yeah, I'm not, not really sure sure about uh, about the time invest investment in that uh, and about the level of confidence it actually provides us um, so so yeah that's 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 my answer hopefully I will have an update for that but so far so far it uh, it is really hard uh, to to implement a good visual regression and to actually uh, make it in a way that it provides you uh, a good feedback and make it efficient because you if you spend three weeks of work on 40 visual tests and you still get those false uh, false negatives then yeah I, I think that's that's not a time well spent uh, and uh, I I totally can take a blame for that like uh, we probably didn't choose. Uh, the best approach for visual testing so i think yeah that might be uh, me being junior with with also with my colleagues i think uh, the the visual testing could be done better on our part as well but so far it wasn't like the the best experience i hope that will change in the future so yeah i think that concludes all the questions i have seen that the chat is moving but i wasn't wasn't really uh, able to pay attention to that as well so sorry for that if you asked if you asked a question and i overlooked that uh and yeah i think that's that's it for my part <laughs>